Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and today I wanted to answer a question from my comment section in the form of a video because I'm sure a lot of people have had this question go through their mind over the years and I wanted to, you know, that's what I do on my channel. I share my knowledge with you and my experience. So first of all, I'm not going to try to say the name because I am just awful. Um, but thanks for the awesome two questions. And I'm going to just answer each one one at a time with some examples that I have pulled up here. And I'll use device examples as well. So he, uh, they ask, I don't know if it's a he or a she, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know you. Uh, can you tell major advantage between default phone and what you, do, what you have done now unlocking and custom ROM. So what he's referring to is my essential phone setup video where I actually went over my step-by-step -step process setting up an essential phone to run on a custom version of Android called CR Droid. One of my favorite ROMs to ever exist uh, from one of my favorite ROM creators. The only one that I really like more than that is more for performance end phones. And that would be either Havoc ROM or uh, Resurrection Remix. Again, depends on the device. But in the case of what this person asked, most of the time, yes, I see a major advantage to unlocking your device, which gives you the freedom of customization. And then, uh, you know, just device as a whole becomes a much better experience compared to uh you know standard rom that comes on the device from the manufacturer that created the device most of the time especially in america oh my god so i don't know how it is overseas somebody can let me know in the comments down below or on discord or both here in America, when you buy a phone, it's loaded with advertisements. It's so stupid, and you can't delete that stuff. So let's say you go out and you buy a brand new Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. Fantastic phone. You're going to turn that thing on, and it's going to be Android's TouchWiz uh, user interface, which has gotten better, but it still sucks. Uh, but you're going to get the TouchWiz interface is what it's called. And there's so many apps you can't delete. You can't delete the Netflix app. You can't delete... Uh, let's... Uh, I'll use my Galaxy S5 actually as an example because I don't know what comes on the S21 Ultra 5G. But generally, this is the stuff you find. There's like certain games, you just can't delete them. I think on the Galaxy S5s, it came with like one of the Madden games. It came with some other game. Uh... There were like four or five games I couldn't delete. There was a photo editor I couldn't delete on top of the one that's built in the gallery. There's other ad other advertisement apps that I can't delete. And a bunch of added features that just suck away battery that it doesn't let you disable. That just chips away at your battery life. It's all running in the background, taking up memory, taking up your RAM, taking up your storage. It's ridiculous. Let's talk custom ROMs. Let's say I was able to unlock that S21 Ultra 5G and put a custom ROM on it. Well, there are two types of ROMs, and the type of ROM that you would more than likely use on that S21 Ultra 5G, or really any Android device that's eight, uh, that shipped from factory with Android 8.1 or newer, would be called a generic system image. You would want to use a GSI. You do have to unlock your bootloader to use virtually any custom ROM or any GSI because that's the only way to flash custom images is through uh, bootloader unlocking. But that's not really that big of a deal. They use a lot of scare tactics like, oh, security issues if you unlock your device. Sure, if you're a complete moron and you don't use half your brain and you go like oh i'm gonna install this this app that looks too good to be true from the play store from google that i found on google it's this game rom i'm gonna install it i don't know who it's from 
you kind of played yourself um (laughs) you're going to probably cause yourself headaches you're probably going to get your data stolen if it's rooted on top of the custom rom if you are not rooted people won't be able to touch you as easily if you are rooted they can at least try to get you to run the app with uh super user rights which if you're on a windows machine is basically running as administrator uh on mac it's putting in your password and saying yes run this uh same thing for pretty much everything but when it comes to the custom rom aspect you can see right here fushin right at the top for android 11 official with aosp aosp stands for android open source project this is direct source code from google slightly modified by fushin to support a multitude of devices i could put this aosp on my razor phone too i could put it on um, some galaxy uh, galaxy tab s7 plus if i have the ability to unlock it i could put it on the galaxy s21 ultra 5g if i can unlock it i could put it on a moto z3 if i can unlock it I could put it on virtually anything that the bootloader can be unlocked and shipped with Android 8.1 or newer from factory. Most devices these days ship with 9 or 10, uh, and they're getting updates to 11 or even 12. 12 isn't really out yet. I think you can get GSIs from Google to beta test it, but don't. Oh, and the user interface is awful. It looks like MUI, which is a cool ROM. But good lord, it looks like iOS, and I don't like it. Uh, Anyway, back on topic. So let's talk device-specific then. My Razer Phone 2. I have flashed about half a dozen GSI images to it, completely correctly. Ones I've used on other devices, and they worked flawlessly. Like, for example, my son has a blue g90 and that phone it shipped with android 9 doesn't even have an update to android 10 and i have it running android 11 thanks to gsi images uh that you know i can get from here so thankfully that phone's running android 11 it runs super well the battery life is fantastic and it's so much better than all the added bloatware that was originally on there from blue the battery lasts like two and a half days even though he can be on it for all all day he'll be watching youtube kids on it or something like that he'll still have battery life for a day and a half two days two and a half just depending on how much he uses it i know a three-year-old child should not have their own cell phone remember who you're dealing with here it was bound to happen uh (laughs) now likewise Let's use another example of, I have a uh, Motorola Droid Razor Mini in front of my, in my hands. These shipped with Android 4.0 on them or 4.1.1. Very old phone, yes, but I'm using a pre-Android 8.1 example. Let's say I did want to flash a ROM onto this. Droid Razor Mini. XDA is <clears throat> my favorite place to come for anything. I think it's the Razer M, actually. I might be wrong, but I just always called it the Mini. So as you can see, there are custom ROMs for the device, but I would not be able to flash a generic system image because it's not supported by that type of device. It's too old. So you would need one that's compiled specifically for the device. And this comes with so many customizations. I've ran Resurrection Remix before on my Galaxy S5. I loved it. I would definitely put it on this Razer Mini uh, once I have the ability to do so. And just like the instructions say, you can use gaps, boot it into TWRP, back up the SD card, and flash it. Major improvements over stock Android from Motorola using a ROM like this. It's night and day difference you see battery life improvements you see uh android app support actually improve especially on these older devices i can't even tell you how annoying it is that 
one of my favorite phones, the Galaxy S5. I have one that I still carry around from time to time, just as like a spare device as a, oh, look, cool, I love this thing. The only reason that newer apps actually work on the device is because of custom ROMs. You can get an Android 7.1 custom ROM for a Galaxy S5. I don't believe, I think even an Android 8.0 ROM exists for these things. Uh, let's see, Galaxy S5. Not the Neo, I just want the Galaxy S5. Original, mini, whatever. Uh, as you can see, 7.1.2, there is... Jesus Christ, cat. 12.1, uh, 13. There's a lot of support. Uh, TW 5.1.1. If you actually don't know my history when it comes to rooting and ROMing, I made ROMs for the Galaxy S5. They are actually still on my Android file host. Let me pause this and I'll find them. So yeah, as you can see here, there's uh, three devices that I tried to support on here. I can check out my managed files. Uh, I never uploaded anything here for the Motorola G6 because it was a nightmare phone. I don't know what this is. Yes, I do. It's for the TCL 10 Pro. I managed to extract the security patch. And the Galaxy S5, as you can see, there's Boxy ROMs, Pen Testers Paradise, and Testing Editions. And I did so much with the Galaxy S5. It was a it was my favorite device because I did so much and I learned so much. Uh, the fingerprint service, so you could add the fingerprint functionality back to the phone after you rooted it and did a custom ROM that didn't support it. VoiceOver LTE settings, so people could add that back to their custom ROM. Uh, Pen Testers Paradise. I never ended up uploading this, and I hate that. It was a custom ROM that was a Galaxy S5 minimalistic ROM combined with Kali Linux ROM, and it functioned fantastically. I had it on my own phone. I used it daily for about six months. It was a great. It was a great ROM. But as you can see, there was Sinful ROM and. I don't think there's anything inside Boxy ROMs 2.0. I never uploaded it here. So there was a little battle before we actually had like source code created ROMs to take dumped system images and create ROMs out of them. And we would see how small of a file size we could make it. So here's a great example of uh, great example of ROM file size, storage saving, and RAM saving. One sec. So yeah, Samsung never went over 6.0 uh, with this device, neither did Verizon. So let's look at the file size for this file. If I were to download it, which it's not going to let me, is it? Oh my god. Hold on, let me find another site. Here we go. Good example. So Android 5 was 1.46 gigs, Android 6 is 1.45 gigs. Look at my ROM size, 550.1 megabytes. We were able to remove that much crap from Samsung's uh, system image in order to make a smaller ROM that functioned better. We got battery life that was almost two times better. I even added in functionality to this. The, uh, the final final size file size for this before my personal add-ons uh, let's see, Boxy ROMs S5. I wonder if I can really find it. Oh, heck yeah, Sinful ROM. There it is. So, my initial fi file size was somewhere around 485 megabytes for the stock ROM. Nothing added except the Google Play Store, and that was it. It didn't even have, like, Google Play games and stuff like that. Oh, I'm sad that the pictures are gone. Uh, as you can see, me and this other guy, we would go back and forth all the time for trying to make things uh, as small as possible. And as you can see, I actually got it to 450 megabytes. All apps added are uninstallable like normal apps. 
uh, themable through the launcher. We'll have a custom theme soon. I never did that. You could do actually 4K video recording on the S5 with my custom ROM, and the battery life was fantastic. As you can see, I did some additions um, to get a away from uh, Samsung's actual stuff. Uh, Textra for text messaging instead of the stock SMS thing. Uh, Smart Launcher 2, much better for battery life. The Chrome Beta instead of standard Chrome. I can't believe I included this. Oh my god. Anyway, uh, Paw Server was another thing that was very useful. So this was kind of a combination ROM. Sinful ROM was a combination of... Uh, my pen testers paradise and this uh, paw server gives you the ability to run a web server on your phone follow music player og youtube basically had ad blockers and stuff built in you'll know that now as youtube vanced my role gallery better than stock open camera app was a better than stock xapk installer pixel battery saver it would turn off pixels on the screen but not so many not so many of them that you would notice. Uh, you wouldn't even notice that the pixels were turned off, and your battery life would go would be probably fifty percent better. And then SQ Light Three, Busy Boxed, and Rooted. Uh, the so I ended up doing it on NCG four point four point two because that seemed to be where I got my best battery life. Pixel Battery Saver also didn't work on Android five point or later. And a lot of people really liked this ROM. I thought it was, this is one of my favorite things I ever did. And a lot of people actually didn't like Lollipop ROMs on these phones. They didn't like Android 5 or Android 6 stuff. They liked the KitKat ROMs, the 4.x.x days. So... It's, and yeah, there's, uh... I was doing things a little backwards. But that's an example of, a really good example of the difference in from Samsung, a custom ROM. That's how much storage space alone you're saving, not to mention the amount of system RAM that you're saving because there's not as much stuff running in the background constantly. I don't remember the specifications for the Galaxy S5, but I think maybe it was two gigs of RAM. And with samsung's just for the example we'll say with samsung's uh system rom running at all times you would see uh numbers for your ram being like 1.25 gigs being used at all times so realistically you only had like 750 megabytes of playable room for games and stuff like that whereas with a rom like mine you would only see about 600 megabytes of system RAM being used. You got to remember, Galaxy S5 is a long time ago. Android was not as optimized as it is now. So you would see a lot of RAM being used for no reason sometimes. But you could even get the RAM down lower if you started disabling other features. So that's a great example of, and I know I went on for about 20 minutes <laughs> for just... Can you tell a major advantage between default phone and what you've done with unlocking custom, custom ROM? Long story short, so much yes. Not on every device, do your research, especially not with every ROM, do your research. But most of the time, if you look for something minimalistic, not heavily modified on Android open source project, you're gonna say battery life, storage space, and running system memory. Uh, and for this particular model or all phones, actually, I guess I did go over that. So for the essential phone, so much yes. For every phone, hit or miss, do your research. The Razer Phone 2 that I have, I've tried Graphene OS. I did flash it once. I've tried a bunch of GSI images. All awful. I have a K-Touch i9 or K-Touch 9 phone. You're going to crap your pants when you see this thing. This would be an example of... Why not? Oh, I know why. I had Fiddler running, so it won't let me on certain websites. 
Um, there we go. So I have one of these things at work. They are actually very cool phones. I have the 64 gig variants, and on one of them, I installed a generic system image. I installed a GSI. I put Android 11 on it. It was running Android 8.1.1. I put Android 11 on it. It's faster than it was with 8.1. It works better than it did on 8.1. It's such a cool little phone. It's my new car phone is what it's going to be. I'm going to use it strictly for streaming music in my car because we also sometimes get phones with like reactivated sim cards in them at work so we can just take those sim cards out of those phones and put them in our own until the sim's like done uh and doesn't work anymore but even this little phone that you wouldn't think would be a daily drivable phone if you're texting don't get one of these if you're using it strictly for phone calls actually a very cool phone if the generic system image made this phone a night and day difference it's such a cool little phone. I love it. I'll do a video on it one of these days. I'll bring one home, uh, do the whole flashing thing right in front of you guys to explain it because it's one of those phones that I don't think anybody's ever made a video tutorial on how to root and ROM it. There is actually a Lineage OS 17.1 ROM specifically built for the phone because GSIs are a little bit weird and you have to do a little uh, partition editing. Oh, this was for my Razer phone. Never mind. I don't need this anymore. You have to do some partition resizing to get it to function if you use a GSI, unless you can find a very small file size one. So, like, you could probably run this one, but you're running very close to, or even this one. It's not technically a 64 gig phone. So, you would have to do ARM 32 A only or something like that. You would have to find a ROM that's A only 32. Probably this one, actually. Run one of these two. And I don't remember which one I used. I used one that was already on my uh, external flash drive or external storage drive. And it worked. It's awesome. I love the little thing. Uh, so I'll do a video on one of those one of these days because it's such a cool phone. I did put a picture of it on Discord a couple days ago. Oops. <laughs> Look at me leaking shit. Uh, let's see. I think I put it in Nerd Talk. No, I didn't. I put it in TechX Sales and Repairs. So here's a great example. This is a Galaxy S8, normal S8, not an S8 Plus. This is how small these phones are. This is with the Lineage OS running on it. Uh, this one wasn't charged at the time. Uh, oh, no, this was standard 8.1 so this is before i flashed it but it still runs just as well so i'm rambling at this point also i found out it's completely against the rules to sell stuff on discord <laughs> so i probably should stop posting these links on discord oh well i will uh talk to you guys later i've gone on and on about this subject i could talk about it all night on different devices and experiences of my own um why i hate samsung maybe i'll make that a rant video one of these days because that sounds like fun i'll make that like my perfect little rant video why i hate samsung in the united states because over in europe they're fantastic phones uh and same with why i hate google in the united states uh, google pixels also have a little thing that like to poke and prod me and bother me um if you want to know anything else electronic, uh, you know, questions about ROMs, questions about, you know, why should I have my bootloader unlocked even if I'm not custom ROMing my phone or rooting it? Why should I do this? Why should I do that? Leave them in the comments below. Um, I kind, I think it would be really cool to do a Q&A on this kind of thing, and I'll talk to you guys later for it. So, actually... I got it. I'll make a Discord section specifically for a Q&A style thing that's about electronics, if you want to know. So I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know this was more of a ramble-heavy video, but 
It was something I wanted to talk about because I have a lot of knowledge about it, and some people still think custom ROMs are bad. Especially companies, they're lying to you, saying, this is bad, this is a security risk, this is this, this is that. No, it's a flat lie. Don't let them lie to you. I'll talk to you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. That's not my... That's Who says that at the end of every single video they make? I hope you learned something. Is it Philip DeFranco? I don't know. If you made it this far into the video, comment down below. If I were to sell my golf, let's put a cap of $10,000. Make car suggestions in the comments down below and make people wonder why we're talking about cars on a video that's all about mobile. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.